Welcome to Daytime Ottawa here on Rogers TV. Another great show ahead and our first guest, we get to live vicariously through her as she traveled through France as a foodie, but not just any kind of foodie, a plant-based foodie. So we're going to live vicariously through her with that travel and also because she has an absolutely beautiful kitchen that I think Chip and Joanna Gaines would be proud of. Um, we are joined by Hannah Sundarani. How are you, Hannah? Great to see you there. Um, let's uh, let's first of all talk about this this trip that you went on in, in France, which I imagine helped inspire your cookbook. Um, tell me about how that trip came about, Hannah. Yeah, so I actually spent four years living abroad in France with my husband. We went for his work and I kind of, it sort of uprooted my career too. And I've always had a passion for food and I decided to go vegan when we moved to France and I started my blog Two Spoons. An interesting, uh, an interesting way to start going vegan in a place like France. Like, did you find it difficult to find many options in France? I know, right? It's a bit of an oxymoron. Like, vegan in France, they don't really go hand in hand. And I will say, it was a little bit challenging. But while I was there, the plant-based community really erupted, and okay. it was really wonderful to watch it unfold and I have to say that that foundational passion for cooking is consistent across the board in France. They love to eat well, they love to cook and so I have to say that my time living abroad there really honed my skills and made me the cook that I am today. Well you're gonna you're actually gonna prepare something for us here today so let's get to that we'll continue the conversation talking about what pe people can find in the cookbook but what are you gonna make for us today? Yeah, so today I'm making my luxurious baked brie. It's a recipe from the Two Spoons uh, section, all devoted to cheeses. Okay. I absolutely love this recipe. Um, you're probably wondering how you make cheese vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering that. Yes, that would have been a question, especially because you said brie. So, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is that creamy, beautiful texture, right? That's exactly it. And I'm going to show you how we do that so we can get started. The way that us vegans love to make cheese is by using cashews. So okay. I don't know if you've ever cooked with cashews before, but they offer a really nice creamy base for the cheese that we're going to make today. So we're going to add the cashews to the blender. And then we also use something called nutritional yeast. And this is what vegans call nature's Cheeto dust yes. because it just has this natural, delicious, cheesy flavor. And that's going to give us that beautiful brie flavor. And very now healthy, we're gonna add right? a couple Incredibly healthy as well. Yes, it's My really good. It's actually really high in B vitamin as well. So, yeah. and you can use it on so in so many ways. You can even sprinkle it on avocado toast. <laughs> oh, my my wife puts it in all of our salads every single day. So I, I eat nutritional I, yeast so every day. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It, there's so many ways that you can use it. And here we're using it in the cheese. Um, and then to continue on, we also add a little bit of tapioca starch. Okay. Um, some garlic. Some tahini. And then we're gonna finish with some salt, some miso, which adds really nice umami to oh, this dish. Oh, interesting, okay. And then, yeah, and then some apple cider vinegar. We're gonna add a little bit of water. And then we're gonna blend this all up until it's nice and creamy and smooth. Okay. So I'm just gonna put on my lid. I'm gonna turn on the blender just for a few seconds. Sure. And so I'll right, leave the demo at that. You're going to wait. I was, I'm just going to say, so right now it's like a cheese smoothie, but you need now exactly, to, I imagine, exactly to, like, to let it okay. set, right? To get that texture. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to blend it until it's a cheese smoothie, we'll say. Okay. Then we're going to add this to a brie baking dish. So just like how you would normally add your brie to a baking dish, but we're going to add this blended version. Then we're going to put this in the oven at 350 for 25 minutes. And when it comes out, you're going to just die when you see how beautiful this oh looks. Oh my goodness. It's this gorgeous, cheesy bake. It's the exact same consistency that you would find in a brie. We need it's like 4D, wonderful. we need like to get like 4D TV. So at one point I could actually reach through and grab or at least smell the smells from your <laughs> kitchen right now. Honestly, it's like a beautiful smell of cheesy garlic. It's so wonderful. It's totally luxurious. <laughs> uh, Hannah, so I see you put it on a board there. So is this sort of your take on a, on a charcuterie board, how to serve? 
That's exactly it. And okay. there's lots of different inspirational ways to put together a charcuterie board in the cookbook. Um, not just for aperitif, but also for breakfast and stuff like this. But for this circumstance, I've shown you how to do it for an aperitif. So we've got our luxurious baked brie in the middle, and then we've got a little arrangement that is beside the baked brie, kind of honing in on this. Um, I always like to keep three things in mind when I'm putting together a charcuterie board. So okay. it's taste, texture, and color. So with taste, we like to offer something that's sweet as well as something that's savory. The savory comes with the baguette and the cheese, of course, and okay. then we have a pop of sweet with the sweet grapes as well as the figs. In terms of texture, we've got that crunch with the grapes. We've also got a little bit of crunch with some nuts that you see here. And then we've got the smooth cheese as well as the soft baguette, which is a really, really nice arrangement. And then finally, color. Nothing right. waters the palette better than a colorful spread. And so here you can see I've pulled in pops of pink and greens and, of course, our golden and glowing green. Um, just quickly before I run out of time, I see you have some baked goods there too. So in the cookbook, you do break it down between, you know, sort of meals, uh, cooking and, and baking because people that are, you know, on a vegan, you know, sort of moving towards that, that sort of vegan lifestyle are always looking for substitutes, right, for both cooking and baking. That's exactly right. People really just how they can substitute and where that comes in. So for the croissants, I've actually substituted traditional butter for vegan butter. And the opportunities for vegan butter are so much better than they used to be. They really are like the real deal. So you're able to make gorgeous croissants that are crispy and flaky and golden, exactly what you would expect in a croissant. Right. As well as sometimes I use pantry staples, things that are lying around the house. And so I hate, I hate to cut you off, but I'm, I just run out of time here. We brought up the website, by the way, so if you want to pick up a copy of the cookbook, it's available everywhere. We'll be right back after this.